Good morning you guys, it's Karen and I'm here to review the Grand Active Retinoid 5% in Squalane. Um, I will be comparing it to the 2% in Squalane and the original 2% serum that's not in Squalane. <laughs> um, I have to point out that candle, do you see it? It says Karen and Kevin, I don't know whether you'll be able to read it from there, but that's what it says. Um, and I got that this morning along with a few other romantic things from my husband as it's our five year wedding anniversary today. So isn't that cute? Okay, so I got the 5%, but there is a whole new range of um, retinoids and retinols. I will be doing a review on the 1% retinol in Squalane separately because the retinol and retinoid they're completely different things. Um, I have done a video, it's very old, but it should still be relevant, talking about the difference between a retinol and a retinoid. The strongest is a retinoid. You've then got retinoid esters, which are weaker than retinoids. Um, and that's what this is. This is a retinoid ester. And then in a separate um, category, if you like, you have retinol. Retinol is weaker than retinoid. And then you have a retinol ester, which is weaker than retinol. You can't really compare a retinoid ester with, for example, retinol, um, because it, it's not known. There isn't really, it's, it's apples and oranges. There's not really any way to compare how strong they are. I certainly have opinions on it, of course, but there is no known way to say, you know, this one is stronger, especially since this is a novel retinoid. It is a retinoid ester, it's a new product. The original retinoid product was this, and it was called Advanced Retinoid 2%. Um, they have now renamed this, but it still exists, and they've called this the Grand Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion. Um, and this is just more like a, it's like a milky liquid. I'm sure there's a drop in there to come out. <laughs> um, anyway, it's something that I reviewed. Oh, it was, we were nearly there. Patience is a virtue that I do not have. Um, it's something that I reviewed, and I really enjoyed this product. It was lovely on the skin. Um, there's no irritation with it. There was no irritation for me. From every review I read, irritation didn't seem to be a problem. There was, I think I heard from one, possibly two people that had had a slight irritation um, response to it, which could or, or could have been the, the retinoid ingredient or it could have been something else. The reason it didn't become a big part of my regime is because I don't, there's not enough known about this ester. Yes, it may be the next wonder product that works better than retinoid, but it has not yet been shown to do that. Um, what it has been shown is to cause less irritation, and I'll talk about the research later. And that's for sure, it definitely causes less irritation than retinoid. So what are the differences in the new product? So if you take the 2% original product, which is now the Grand Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion, you've then got a 2% Gran Active Retinoid in Squalane. So the biggest change is they are in Squalane um, and they have now added a 5% Gran Active Retinoid product, whereas before it was only 2%. Between the original 2% that is now called Gran Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion versus the 2% Gran Active Retinoid in Squalane, the difference is that the one with Squalane does not include retinol. Um, the original product included a mixture of retinoid and retinol. The new product does not. There is no product, there's no retinol at all in the Squalane products. And the final difference that I can see in the Squalane product is that they've added in tomato extract. And that's significant simply because it is thought to be a good antioxidant on the skin, albeit a weak one. But the data sheet for this Gran Active Retinoid suggests that it works the best um, with not just the data, actually I can't remember if it was the data sheet or the research, but it's definitely suggested that it works the best with an antioxidant. And so the addition of any kind of antioxidant will, I think, be a good thing. But let's talk percentages. The active ingredient in here, in these retinoid products from The Ordinary, is hydroxypinacolone retinoate, which is, as I said, a retinoid ester. Um, there has been some research done, but no conclusive, independent, double-blind, etc. research to show its efficacy. It is definitely looking promising, and the initial results are definitely good, but the results seem to be more focused on, or the results seem to be more focused on, it doesn't irritate. It may work as well as a retinoid for anti-aging, but it definitely doesn't irritate as much as a retinoid. I've always said that I would question that slightly because one of the actions of a retinoid 
is retinization, which is the turnover of the skin, which is what causes irritation if you overuse it or don't use it slowly enough. And so I would question if there was no retinization at all, whether it was as efficient or as strong um, as a retinoid. That's not to say that that's correct. I'm, that's the way that I see it. That's my opinion. And neither am I saying that you have to have peeling in order for it to be efficient. It's just that retinization is a part of that process that most people don't go slow enough to avoid or don't go gentle enough on their skin to avoid. So the product I've bought is 5% Gran Active Retinoid. So let me explain what Gran Active Retinoid is. Gran Active Retinoid is the name given to the combination of hydroxypinacolone retinoate, which is the retinoid ester, the active ingredient in here, combined with dimethyl isosorbide, which is a skin conditioner. And that's something that is there to stop the irritation. That being the case, you might be thinking, well, that'll be why it doesn't cause irritation because it's combined with this dimethyl isosorbide. But dimethyl isosorbide, to my knowledge, is not a new product. And so it, it could have been discovered and combi be combined with retinoid. Um, I don't know whether that's been tested. I haven't seen anything. I would love to know actually if retinoid combined with dimethyl isosorbide would stop the irritation. I don't believe it would. I know that hundreds of people have tried to use retinoids, the actual retinoid, not this, not the ester, with oil, um, you know, really thick, rich emollients and creams, etc., and still had peeling. And I believe that's in how fast you use it. You know, I think it's it's about slowing it down and getting your skin accustomed to it. 5% Gran Active Retinoid, but of that, 0.5% is the active ingredient. So 0.5% of HPR, hydroxypinacolone retinoate, known as HPR, and the rest of it is dimethyl isosorbide, which is a skin conditioner. That's not an issue. Um, it's not, I'm not saying that there's any, anything misleading there at all, because it is 5% Gran Active ret Retinoid but it is not 5% retinoid. Um, and I have read things, not on the 5%, but on the 2%, where they would talk about 2% being a really high level of retinoid and that that was really good, but it missed the point. Firstly, it's a retinoid ester, so it can't be compared with that level of retinoid. And secondly, it, the 2% is 0.2% HPR. Just for interest, the 2% um, emulsion, the one that they've they've renamed it but it's the same thing it still has retinol in it, it has 0.1% retinol 0.2% HPR and 0.1% retinol so just to talk a bit more about the research there the research is showing that this product in this combination the Gran Active Retinoid is not as irritating as a retinoid and I 100% agree with that it's definitely not as irritating So it, it is not even suggested that it is better than using a retinoid that you get on prescription. That is still the gold standard. That is still the one that will work the best on aging, but it will produce irritation. So let me talk about how this feels um, and what the product is like. I've used quite a bit of it. You can see it's up to about there. Um, I, I tested this while tested this whilst making sure I didn't test any other product that could irritate my skin. So I didn't do it at the time I was using the flavanone mud, which I'm going to review. Um, you saw that, it's just, it, it just looks like an oil. Um, yeah, I didn't use any other products that could cause me irritation, no new products, etc. so that I knew if I did get irritation, it would be from this. I didn't expect to get irritation from this um, because I just feel like it's not, it's just such a weak product. To me, a retinoid ester is weak um, and so shouldn't cause a huge level of irritation. Um, so that's what it's like. I absolutely love the formula. I think it feels amazing. Um, I, I almost can't choose between this and the 2% emulsion for feeling. I think the reason I like this is because it has that dimethyl isosorbide in it, which is the skin condi conditioner that I know I love as an ingredient. And it also has jojoba oil in it or jojoba oil in it, which is another one that I know I like as an ingredient mixed with a squalane. So it's not 100% squalane. So yeah, I would struggle to choose between, say they did a 5%, I would struggle to choose between a 5% 
emulsion and a 5% in square lane because it feels really lovely on the skin. I actually really enjoyed that it had an oil in it so I could feel the benefits in my skin from the oil if nothing else. I can't tell you whether if you got irritation from the 2% emulsion whether the 2% in square lane would stop that irritation. Um, I suppose with it with the added oil in it then that's the idea and I'd love to hear from somebody that's tried the 2% and got irritation so therefore is trying the 2% in squalane and, and did it make a difference um, but like I said there was literally so few people that I saw from what I read and from what I heard from you guys that had an irritation from the retinoid product that um, it surprised me that they needed to reformulate them. The retinol whole different subject like I said I'll talk about that separately I reacted very very badly to that so I can see why they reformulated that. So what are my thoughts on this? My thoughts are that if you can't get hold of a retinoid like myself, we're in the UK, it's very, very difficult to get hold of a retinoid here. I have Differin, um, which is a, a retinoid, but it's not the number one gold standard tretinoin retinoid, which is the one that is proven for particular types of photo aging. There are some studies showing that this does work, Differin does work on aging. There are some people that believe it has a different mechanism, but um, it, it does have a mechanism that has been shown to work on skin aging, um, but perhaps not, there's not yet as much evidence showing that it works as well as tretinoin, for example. So you can get that one, but even that one you can only get on prescription. And I don't actually, I think the only way I would be able to get it on prescription would be to see a private dermatologist, which would cost a lot of money. Um, and you know, obviously we don't have insurance here, etc. It would cost a lot of money to see somebody to then get this prescribed. So I think that if you want to use a retinoid, but you can't easily get your hands on one and you have tried retinol and retinol has not, has been too irritating for you, this would be a fantastic product to use. And I say it in that order because obviously the best product is a retinoid, a tretinoin, um, or even a differin. Then after that, retinol is still more proven than this ester. But I'm I'm never ever going to say this is a bad product because it's not. It, it could well be the next big thing, and the research is promising, and it's less irritating. You know, it is a great product. It's just not proven yet to work on anti-aging, to work as an anti-aging solution. Um, and I think the thing is with retinoid. It takes a long time to see results and with retinol it will take even longer because retinol is weaker than retinoid. This being a retinoid ester we know that it is definitely weaker than retinoid and we can't compare it to retinol but it means it will take a long time and so if you have a look at the videos on YouTube people are doing video updates of this is me after a year of using tretinoin or a retinoid. You know, there's not, it's not like this is me, this is an update after six weeks, it's after a year. And I think with this product, um, you might well see differences, but it will take, I would say a year at least, because it's an ester. And there's no suggestion out there at all even that it works quicker than a retinoid or a retinol. Um, people may see a lot of results with any of the retinoid products, be it the emulsion, or the squalane to their skin because the dimethyl isosorbide is a skin conditioner and there are other ingredients in there that are good ingredients for your skin. So squalane in itself will improve your skin. I know there's a lot of people out there that loved the 2% retinoid emulsion, the advanced 2% retinoid as it was called. Um, but what I heard from those people was that their skin felt wonderful after using it for a week, which I believe was down to the other ingredients in it potentially the HPR but there's you know there's a small percentage and it's that's a very short amount of time um, and from others I heard that after using it for six months to a year they felt that they could feel changes in their skin um, and I would say that's what you could expect from using this product. So my recommendation to you if you want to introduce some retinoids retinols into your regime for anti-aging purposes would be this I would say to either use the 2% retinoid emulsion because that has 0.1% retinol in it, which is proven, and not many people have had a reaction to it. So I would use that, or I would say go for the 2% retinoid in squalane. But if you do that, I would say to introduce a 0.2% retinol in squalane as well once a week. 
and see how you get on with that. And, and if you can, if your skin can tolerate a 0.2% retinol, increase that to maybe twice a week. But in between that, use your 2% retinoid in squalane. And it's really important if you're using retinol to not use the 2% retinoid emulsion because that already has retinol in it. My apologies, I know that this is complicated and it is complicated to understand, especially because people will use the term retinol and retinoid and they sound so similar um, and people will use them mistakenly. I've done that in videos. I know in past videos I've had to put on the screen, I meant retinoid, not retinol because they are different. Um, and different percentages of those give different reactions. And then this isn't a retinoid, so that further complicates it. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions you have, of course, about this. They don't recommend on here using retinoid with retinol. I suppose what they're saying is do not use with other retinoid treatments, which could lead you to believe that it's okay to use with another retinol product. But a retinol product could fall under the umbrella of a retinoid product. Retinol is, is actually converted into retinoid in the skin or into retinoic acid. It's just, it has a further step to go than using retinol. So would I repurchase this? Yes. I would repurchase this because it's the only one that's 5% at the moment and I want to use the highest level of HPR. Um, but I would always combine this with retinol if possible. I will at some point use my differin. I would like to try that to target specific areas like the lines on my neck. I wouldn't use this in the hope that I was going to see any quick results. Um, it would just be a part of my regime. I like the fact that it's got oil in it because that means I don't have to worry too much about using a really rich moisturizer or anything like that. I'll combine it with retinol if I can find a way for my skin to tolerate retinol, which I'll talk about more in the other video. Um, and if I suddenly was able to purchase tretinoin, particularly in, um, there was a, a cream called Refisa, which had some kind of emollient in it that most people seem to find a lot better than the normal tretinoin creams you could get. And I would love to get some Refisa, but it's just not something that, like I said, we can buy here. Um, it would cost a few hundred pounds to get a consultation and then, you know, perhaps get prescribed it from there. Um, so yes, I probably will buy this again um, because it's something, it's so mild for me and it's such a lovely product that I, I use it without really thinking of it as a retinoid. I hope I haven't confused you further. I know sometimes with these videos, people say, I'm really confused now. And sometimes I think, oh goodness, I didn't do a good job of explaining it. In fact, a lot of the time I think that. But then I also do, when I think it through, realize that it is a complicated subject. It's, it isn't a simple one, and I don't think there's any way I could make it more simplistic. But what I can do is answer your questions. So if you have questions, I will do my very best to answer them for you. Um, I'll list all of my makeup in the description below as always. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.